All right, we'll begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly oh. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that uh, even while we were sinners, Lord, you died for us. We thank you for your salvation, which you offer so freely to us if we just accept it. I thank you, Lord, for um, your grace each and every day, Lord. Just pray you with us today. Help us to glorify you, what we do here. Just pray that we uh, draw together our thinking on the Frenet frame and just to uh, bring clarity and uh, completeness to the topic, Lord. You may pray. Amen. So, uh, Last time, we talked about the Fresnes ray uh, equations and frame, and um, my, uh, my setup assumed uh, arc length parameterization for the curve, essentially, right? So this time, I want to extend that. So here's the curve, you know. And I want to suppose that if you take a point on the curve, and let's suppose that it, uh, you know, uh, we're going to look at uh, nonlinear. It's nonlinear, and um, we're, we're going to study. Uh, it's and it's a re regular curve. It permits a nonstop parameterization. So we're going to consider two different sort of parameterizations here. The one will be uh, let's see here, gamma of t, and then the other one will be the unit speed parameterization. So I, I just put a tilde over it, um, and so that would be s of t. So that's the relation between um, the, perv the curve parameterized by time and the curve parameterized by arc length. There's some connection between these in terms of the total arc length function. And then, so you can differentiate this, right? If you calculate then d gamma dt, what do you get? You get d gamma tilde d, well, you could say d, you could say d, ds, since s is the variable for gamma tilde. Or, you know, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll write it this way. It's, it's, it's gamma tilde prime of s of t times what? Times ds dt, right? Because that's the chain rule that we worked out the other day. So, um, so you can call this thing, of course, we can call this thing v for, you know, it's the speed. And there's no reason that that should be 1 um, when we're looking at the time parameter. And then we can also define uh, t, t of t as equal to uh, t tilde of s of t. We can define n of t as equal to n tilde of s of t. We can define b of t to be b tilde of s of t. Now, the, the t tilde, n tilde, b tilde, those are actually what I described last class um, for a unit speed curve. Okay, So we, I gave you the definitions for n tilde, t tilde, b tilde last class. So basically, you could go to the last class and put a tilde over everything, and it would be consistent with this one. But I didn't do it, because last class, if I'd used tilde on everything, you guys would have been like, why are you putting a tilde on everything? It's really annoying, so I didn't do it. But now I need to distinguish, so I am. But with this notation settled, the relation between the derivatives of t and the derivatives of t tilde are pretty simple, right? Like chain rule also happens here for like what's t prime? t prime or dt dt would be uh, t tilde prime times ds dt. And likewise, n prime is equal to, you know, n tilde prime ds dt, and, and b prime is b tilde prime uh, ds dt. Now, why do we care? Well, we worked out the fresnes ray equations last time for the, for the ones with tilde. So last time we have that t tilde prime is equal to kappa n tilde. And um, I guess I should put a tilde on a kappa. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and we also worked out that n tilde prime was, what was it? It was minus kappa t, kappa tilde t tilde, plus the torsion uh, b tilde. And then we also had that b tilde prime was minus the torsion um, 
n tilde, if I recall correctly, those are the Fresnes ray equations, slapping a tilde on everything to indicate that we did it with respect to arc length. Now, if you think about it, it's important that we made those definitions with respect to arc length because arc length is, you know, you think, well, there's, there's many, many different parameterizations for a curve, right? But arc length is nearly unique, right? There's only one arc length function along the curve, right? Because the, the distance along a curve is given by the you know, intrinsic notion of distance in three dimensions. And so up to the place where you say t equals zero happens, like up to where you say the, the arc length is zero, it's, it's unambiguous to say the arc length parameterization of a curve. All right? So that, that, that then defines kappa tilde and tau tilde unambiguously in terms of the arc length. That said, we don't always want to do things with respect to arc length, so it's nice to be able to switch this to just, you know, formulas for a curve in terms of the, just a, a parameter, uh, you know, t. So, I, I, you know, if I look at this, what is, what is <coughs> t tilde prime is what? It's one over, one over v t prime, right? So, what's this give me? One over v, I'll do it for, one, for the t. One over, one over v t prime is equal to what? E is equal to kappa. Um, n. And here I'm, I'm, I'm evaluating this. Here, so basically here's the rule. Kappa, um, kappa of s of t, oh, how to say this, sorry. Kappa of t is equal to kappa tilde of s of t. That's how these, these, these functions are related. You, you know, the corresponding arc length parameter for the corresponding time Likewise for the torsion. So, I mean, getting to the point, what's the first equation become? T prime equals to what? V, the speed, times the curvature, times n. With the understanding that the curvature and the normal have to be rewritten in terms of the time parameter rather than the arc length parameter. And what are the other Fresnes ray equations? You just multiply by v. That's all. So by essentially the same argument, you get n prime is equal to minus kappa v t um, plus tau v b, and b prime is equal to minus tau v n. And there you have it. This is the non-unit speed. Fresnes ray equations. By the way, you should be careful. If you're not using arc length as a parameter, the curvature and the torsion are not defined by the special formulas I gave you last time. You have to include a speed factor. So what's the formula for the torsion? What's the formula for the curvature if we're using time rather than arc length as a parameter? Curvature at time t is equal to what? You can just take the dot product with the first equation, both sides with n, and then divide by v. So it's, it's 1 over v um, t prime dot n. And the torsion as a function of time would be uh, minus 1 over the speed times uh, b prime dot m. Um, let's see here. While, while I'm at it, how do you calculate tn and b with respect to time? Forget about arc length for a second. How you just, just how, if, suppose you don't know anything about arc length. How do you calculate the tangent normal and binormal with respect to a time variable? rather than an arc length variable. So t, you just do, you do 1 over the speed times gamma prime of t. In other words, it's just, it's the unit velocity. You take the velocity vector and divide by the speed, normalized velocity vector, unit tangent. 
last class, I didn't have to have the 1 over v. I didn't need a 1 over v last class because v was equal to 1. Now I need it. Um, n, n of t, it's just equal to 1 over the magnitude of t prime of t. All right, 1 over the magnitude of t prime of t times t prime of t. So you just differentiate the unit tangent, and that gives you the, 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 the normal. And then how do you find the binormal? There the, the song and dance is exactly the same. So b of t is just equal to um, t of t cross product with n of t. So there you go. That's, this is the um, you know, no frills, how to calculate the Frenet apparatus for a curve or parameterized by time. There are special formulas in the book in terms of cross products of you know, accelerations and third derivatives. And there's all kinds of special trick formulas that you can look up. But geometrically, these are the you know, plain truth of the matter. All right. So let me show you an example. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, any questions about this? I'll start. So here is an example which is complicated, but hopefully not too complicated. It's kind of like what we did last time, but it's really not. Um, suppose you have r of t is equal to e to the t cosine t, e to the t sine t, and e to the t. So what we want to do is calculate the Frenet frame as well as the curvature and torsion for the given curve. OK. So what do we have here? Can we simplify the formula before we get carried away with any calculations? E to the t factors out. Yeah, that's a good idea. So r of t is equal to e to the t cosine t, sine t, oops, <laughs> duh, 1. So what's the, what's the velocity then? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm using r. But you know, think of this as the gamma that I used a second ago. There's no, I, sometimes I use r for the curve. Sometimes I use gamma for the curve. Don't make too much of it. They're just different letters for the same idea. Um, <clears throat> so. You figure r prime of, oh, sorry, try to stick with it. Gamma prime of t is what? We use a product rule, right? So you've got e to the t times cosine t sine t 1 plus e to the t times the derivative of the vector, which is minus sine t cosine t 0. So we can, we can combine the terms again, right? So we have um, gamma prime of t is what? Oh, I guess there's an e to the t on everything, isn't there? So I can leave the e to the t outside, right? And I've got what? I've got cosine t minus sine t comma, um, I suppose, cosine t plus sine t. And then what's the z component? Just, just 1, right? Again, with the e to the t factored out. What's the speed here? Well, you can check that the vector that I'm going to underline here in brown What's the length of this thing? You got cosine t minus sine t quantity squared, right? Plus cosine t plus sine t quantity squared plus 1. What's that work out to? 
So this, what I'm calculating right now is the uh, magnitude of gamma prime of t. Well, I'm not even, sorry. That works out the one, not, not quite. Three? No, I don't think that either. Cosine squared t minus two cosine t sine t um, plus sine squared t plus, so this guy. Uh, you know what? The three might have been right. I, I, I take that back. I shouldn't have uh, been so dismissive of your number three. I think that three is a, is a pretty good answer because that's what we just see here, right? These guys cancel. And so you get cosine squared plus sine squared, cosine squared plus sine squared, all together, three. Now that's the length of the vector here, squared. Right, the length squared is three, so that actually has length squared of three. And then this e to the t is just a positive factor out front, right? So the, the speed then is, is e to the t times the square root of three. So it's certainly not unit speed, right? I mean, I could solve this for, I mean, I, could, I, I, I think I probably could find the arc length as a function of time here because I can solve e to the t for t. That's not a big deal, right? But let's not do that. Let's use our new fangled time-dependent Fresnel equations. OK, so what's t? What's the unit tangent? It is simply 1 over the square root of 3 cosine t minus sine t <coughs> cosine t plus sine t 1. So there you go. Where did that come from? All I did was I took the, the derivative, the velocity, and I divided by the speed. The e to the t's cancel, and we have a leftover square root of 3. OK, so now how do we find the normal once you guys are caught up with me? So we calculate t prime of t. So that's 1 over the square root of 3. So that gives me what? Minus sine t minus cosine t, comma minus sine t plus cosine t, comma 0. Now I need to figure out what's the length of that. How do you calculate the length of this vector? We're trying to count. So our goal at the moment, <coughs> I should probably state that goal. I said it, but I didn't write it. Find, maybe I didn't say it either. I don't know, T, N, B, curvature, and torsion for this curve. So we found t. We found t, the, the unit tangent. Now I'm working on the unit normal. The unit normal we can find from differentiating the unit tangent because we know that will be perpendicular because we know t dot t is equal to 1, so t prime dot t is equal to 0, which means t prime <laughs> is orthogonal to t, but then we have to normalize because we want a unit normal. So we're, this isn't n yet, but it's close to it. We need to figure out the length of t prime of t, which is what? Whenever you're calculating the length of a vector and you got a scalar out front, ignore it. You can just ignore this 1 over square root of 3. It doesn't matter, right? You're just trying to figure out a vector of unit length in this direction. So if you think about it, if you just find the length of this, which is what? It's sine squared plus cosine squared plus sine squared plus cosine squared plus 2 
plus 2 sine cosine minus 2 sine cosine when you work it out. The cross terms cancel, and you're just left with 2. So this thing right here I'm underlining has length square root of 2. So if I want a unit vector in the direction of this vector, I just take that and divide by square root of 2. Now, of course, if you don't believe me, that's your prerogative. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I was <laughs> trying to say something here. Ah, Curses. This is not the magnitude, obviously. Can't write magnitude equals vectors. This is actually, honest to goodness, n of t. So my, my, my point here was the length of t prime of t was equal to 1 over the square root of 3, because that's just sitting there, and then the length of this thing, which is the square root of 2. So basically, you just take t prime of t and divide by the square root of 2, two over 3. And the, the square root of 3 is canceled, and you're just left with 1 over the square root of 2 for the normal. There's the normal. Aha. Now, at this point, we have everything we need to calculate the curvature. What's the curvature? One over the speed times t prime dot n, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, if I take n of t, I mean, this is square root of 2 over 3, right? So n of t is equal to t prime of t divided by the magnitude of t prime of t, which is equal to 1 over the square root of 3 stuff divided by square root of 2 over 3. So the stuff is still there, and the square root of 3 is canceled, and you're just left with 1 over the square root of 2. Is that? that what, what I was trying to say is that you don't really need to write this out if you can see the vectors for what they are. Essentially, this doesn't matter, because you know it's going to divide out when you do this calculation. So if you just figure out what's the length of the actual vector piece here, you can just rescale by whatever the length of that is, and that will give you the unit normal. For a simpler example, if I've got 375,432, 1, 2, and I want a unit vector in the direction of this vector, all I do is go 1 over the square root of 5, 1, 2, and I completely ignore the 375,432 because it's irrelevant. Because if I can normalize a vector in the same direction, which 1, 2 is the same direction as 375,432, 1, 2, you know, ignore, ignore the, the coefficient up front when you can. That's what I'm saying, ignore this 1 over the square root of 3 because it's, it's irrelevant. If I, if I find a unit vector in the direction of the underlined triple, that's it. All right, so the curvature then, what is it? Um, v, what was V? Uh, e. Yeah, 1 over uh, e, e, to yeah, e to the t squared of 3. What's t prime dot n? Maybe we can simplify that formula further, huh? I mean, what is, let me, let me, let me just, yeah. Let me, well, what, what is t prime dot n? What's another way to look at this? This is 1 over v, what? t prime dot t prime over the magnitude of t, right? Um, t prime. Which is what? 1 over v magnitude of t prime squared divided by the magnitude of t prime, which is just what? 1 over the speed times the magnitude of t prime, right? There you go. There's an easier formula for us to use. Let's use this one. Right. 
for your future reference, there's an easier one to use. Because we're, we're going to have to calculate the magnitude of T prime in the, in the process of our, our calculation anyway, right? Eh, I suppose if you don't take my advice, you'll calculate it. <laughs> so anyway, here's square root of 2 or 3. What do we get? Curvature of T. What do you say it was? 2? Magnitude of t prime was the square root of 2 over 3, right? So the curvature times t is, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I guess I can write it various different ways. Um, I don't know. What's, what's best? Uh, here, let me confuse the students. e to the minus t, I mean, this won't confuse you guys. Square root of 2 divided by 3. For some reason, this formula appeals to me. I don't know. There's the curvature at time t. Oh, man. That is not what I have in the notes. Which me do you want to say is wrong? Me in class or me in the notes? <laughs> You mean the notes because you already wrote all this? Okay. Second that. All right. So, note to self: there may be a there may be an error somewhere on page 115 to 116 here, because I I'm, I'm missing a square root of three. From what I see. 116. 115 to 116. Okay. But anyway, I'm... Well, if I made an error here and you guys already saw it and didn't tell me about it, you're just being mean. So I'm going to assume that you guys would be nice to me. And also that you're smart enough to have found an error if I was to make one here. So let us go on. What's next? Right? So before we can... How do we calculate the torsion? We need to... Binormal, right? What's the binormal? T cross n, right? So we have 1 over the square root of 6. I just went ahead and took the 1 over the square root of 2 and the 1 over the square root of 3. Oop, not t prime. I'm an idiot. Uh, oh, here's the t of t right here in the brown. So 1 over the square root of 3 and 1 over the square root of 2 gives us 1 over the square root of 6. And then we have to take the cross product of cosine t minus sine t, cosine t plus sine t, 1. And let's see here. Uh oh, I ran out of room. I'm going to run I'm gonna have to write between the lines here. Um, minus sine t plus cosine t, comma, ah, finally a zero. I love zeros. So what do we get? b is equal to what? 1 over the square root of 6 of what? Let's see here. So to get the x component, I take uh, z cross, uh, excuse me, y cross z, that's zero, minus z cross y, which gives me sine t minus cosine t for my x component. Now, as you're following along, if you disagree with my x component or what's following, let me know. But give me a second here before you make up your mind. Let's see here. The, the y component we get from what? z cross x, which is minus, minus sine t minus cosine t. And then yeah, the z, okay, that's good. And then to get the z component, I do xy. I mean xy. Oh, that's kind of ugly, isn't it? So that gives me minus cosine sine the 
cross terms cancel, right? So I think I get cosine squared. So cosine squared t minus sine squared t. And let's see here. No, 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 it should be the other way around. It should be co minus cosine squared plus sine squared. So I'm, I'm trying to multiply this times that to put here. So I get uh, minus sine cosine. Oh, I, the, the cross terms don't cancel, do they? Oh, I think I just get sine squared t minus 2 sine t cosine t uh, but, but, um, um, plus cosine squared. And what else is there? This times that, right? The other term with a minus. So minus um, Oh, I'm erasing the thing I needed. <laughs> Minus parentheses what? Um, that gives me minus cosine squared t. Minus 2 sine t cosine t. Yeah, thankfully the cross terms cancel, right? Minus sine squared t. If I was smarter, I would have just copied the answer down from my notes. Is that just two? Well, this cancels, right? And then we get sine squared plus co yeah, it's two. So You think the y has the wrong sign? I don't think so, no. I think the y is fine. Uh, let's see. Um, we can tell pretty quick by taking dot products with our answer, right? B dot n should be what? Better be 0. So I've got. This is uh, minus sine plus cosine times sine minus cosine. And here is, um, well, it's, it, it, you see, it, they're both kind of like minus sine plus cosine. But the one is times sine plus cosine. The other, th these are opposite. It, it's 0. It's 0. And that dot t will work out to minus 2 plus 2, which is also 0. So there you go, that's the binormal. What's B prime then? 1 over the square root of 6. Cosine t plus sine t minus cosine t plus sine t, 0. Now we almost have the torsion. Now, how do we calculate the torsion? from the derivative of the binormal. There seems to be some whispering in here. I hope it's about how to do the calculation, because this actually is a problem I might put on the test. So like, haha, I never figured this out. Is like a, not only is it a bad conversation to be having, in it, it's a foolish conversation to be having right now. Because <laughs> this is something I might ask you to do. All right, b, b prime dot what? You guys are telling me I got distracted by my own thoughts. B prime dot n uh, yeah. should be what? If I take the dot product of both sides here with n, that tells me what? Minus the torsion times the speed. n dot n is 1, right? So b prime dot n is what I should calculate. What does that give us? 1 over the square root of 6, right? What does n have on it? 1 over the square root of 2. 
what's b prime dot n? So look at this. Look at that. Looks like I've got a minus minus parentheses sine t plus cosine t quantity squared. Man, this example is sucking the life out of me. Um, and then that's what? Plus what? I can, I can look at this as sine t. Well, it's really minus sine t minus cosine t quantity squared, I think. If I look at it the right way, because this is sine t minus cosine t, and this right here can be re rewritten as minus parentheses sine t minus cosine t, right? So if I have this times that, it's 1 plus 1 minus, right, with these guys. And then how does this simplify? I think we've done this enough now. <laughs> sine squared plus cosine squared plus 2 sine cosine t. Sine squared plus cosine squared. Um, and there's a minus 2 sine t cosine t in here. Uh oh, he's on the move. Um, sorry, I'm being distracted. My son is up to no good. All right. Um, oh, so you get what? Minus 2? And so that's all equal to what? Minus the torsion, which we're trying to find, right, times the speed, which was speed was what? e to the t times the square root of 3. And so the torsion is what? If I can do math. What is, what is this actually? This is what? This is square root of 3 times the square root of 4, right? So if I div that gives me one third, and I have e to the t down here, and the the twos cancel, right? So it looks to me like the torsion is one over three e to the t. If I haven't made a mistake, woohoo! That is what I got in the notes. So I'm either wrong both times or right both times. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Geometrically, what's going on here, guys? What is, what is tor I mean, what are, what are we calculating? What, what, do all, what does all this mean? Right? If you go back to the original problem here, what is it? It's kind of like the helix, right? But the... Right, it's like the radius has been replaced with e to the t. And rather than having mt here, I have e to the t, right? So it's like the radius, the radius for the helix, in some sense, has been, it's just gets get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And it's also going up faster and faster and faster, too. So, I mean, intuitively speaking, I think of this thing as something like, it's some kind of like upward grow, exponentially upward growing spirally thing. And um, as you can see, it makes sense that as t goes to infinity, now as t goes to infinity, you can glean some things from the formulas we found. What happens as time goes to infinity for the curvature? Curvature goes to zero, which makes sense, right? As this curve goes on and on, it's getting further and further away. Its, it's, it's, it's rotations are being larger and larger. They're getting more and more linear, right? And so you, you can define a line to have curvature zero. That's a sensible thing. And so you can see that we're approaching that in the limit as t goes to infinity. And how about the torsion? What happens to the torsion is? And the torsion is also tending to zero. So in other words, it, it always has torsion, but the torsion's getting smaller and smaller as you go further up because uh, the, the torsion basically... So there's, there's two things to think about. The curvature measures how the, how the unit tangent is evolving, right? So the, the, as, the, as the unit tangent, as you go along the curve, 
down here, the, the unit tangent's changing direction really fast, right? So here, the curvature is big. Up here, the unit tangent, it's hardly moving a bit, hardly moving a bit as you go from point to point in the curve, right? So the, the curvature is small. Likewise, the torsion measures, the torsion measures basically how the binormal is changing from place to place, right? And so that, you know, that's changing a lot when time is small, but very little when time is big. So if one changes slow, so does the other? Uh, well, in this example, I think more generally there's a disconnect, but ah. I think my hope for covering homework questions was somewhat misplaced today. <laughs> yes? I, I'm not sure I understand your question yet. By the speed, really right. You can, you could have had when you say it doesn't really matter, like expand on that thought. That's the thing I'm not sure I so want to agree with. I mean, if I wanted to like write it down and just write down 1 over B multiplied by B prime dot N and just leave the B on that side. The oh, yeah. Prime. That would have been, that would have been fine. That's a known formula for the, I, I had that written, I had that written, I had to erase it because I got too far along in the other vector. That, that's fine. Oh, yeah, that, that's to totally fine. Um, and you guys have a note card too, right? So you, you're allowed to have, um, you know, you have, you have a, f a note card. You can put all the formulas you like. I mean, you can put Elizabeth and poetry on there if you want, Psalms, Proverbs, whatever floats your boat. It's your three by five card to do with as you wish. But I, I kind of personally recommend the Fresnes ray equations. They're useful. But yeah. So just to, so I guess we will get a chance to use that vertical pan. <laughs> I figured out how to make the uh, the silly tripod pan vertically. It's a small victory for me, but um, just to be more explicit about, you know, wh what is the geometry here? Let's talk about that for a couple minutes at least. So here's a formal calculation. If you were to compare, say, the unit tangent at time t and then the unit tangent at time t plus dt. Engineers are fond of these kinds of infinitesimal arguments. Many of you profess to be engineers or want to be one soon. So it should be in good company. Not too many math majors here. So they will deride this thing I'm doing right now. Uh-oh. It's not safe for me here anymore. Um, <laughs> so if you, could, you could study the angle. You know, Imagine moving t of t over to the other point, and you can study the, ang the change in angle, right? That's basically how fast the unit tangent is turning from time t to time t plus dt, right? And what I'm trying to say is the curvature actually describes this rate of change of, cur of turning. Let me, see, let me show you explicitly how. So dt would be the difference between t of t plus dt and t of t, right? Just by vector, basic vector addition stuff here. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I, I, I work it out with the usual calculus, you know, take the, the length squared is the dot product of the dot product, and then if you drop the terms, um, well, let's see here what I have, what, I, what did I keep here? Um, well, of course, the, the unit vector dot itself is 1, so I got, I've got 1 and then minus 2 over here, uh, and then in the middle, I have the, the 2 cosine of, um, Daniel, you're distracting me, man. How do I get that? Yeah, I'm just, I, I think it's just uh, algebra, but uh, you say I copied the, what's the difference between the second and the third step is a good question. 
I see none. I see none either. Hey, what idiot wrote these? Uh, I think I was supposed to make a step there. Anyway, so I have I have this worked out in, in like uh, you know before I typed it out, and I have more steps there. But um, anyway, once you once you once you if you accept that it is in fact true, um, there's a parenthesis missing here, obviously, but. Um, if you use a small angle approximation for, for, for cosine phi, which is reasonable, since we're looking at time t, to t plus dt, the angle change should be pretty small for an infinitesimal increment of time. So that means phi is very close to zero. And so I can use the, um, the power series approximation for cosine phi. And that makes the ones cancel and just leaves you the square root of phi squared, which is the uh, absolute value of the, the, uh, angle, the angle change. And so, in, in short, what this derives for you then is that the curvature is plus or minus the change in that, that angle um, with respect to arc, you know, arc length. It's the rate of change of the arc length with respect to the angle. The faster the angle turns, the, the, fa the, the, the larger the, the curvature. Here's an explicit picture to kind of make good on what I'm saying. If you have, for a given length of arc length, so this length here is the same as that length there, but of course this has a greater curvature than that. And as you can see, the, the angle change in the unit tangent is much smaller for this one as opposed to this one. As you can see, this one, the unit tangent is completely reverse direction, whereas this one is just rotated up like 40 degrees or something. So the rate, rate of change of the, you know, the change in, in direction of the unit tangent is what the curvature describes. The, um, the rate of change of the torsion, on the other hand, describes a different modification. The, the torsion basically, basically quantifies how the curve is lifting up off the infinitesimal plane of motion. So the binormal serves as the normal to the infinitesimal plane of motion. And um, so the, well, here's explicit formula for the osculating circle. I never have time to cover it. Um, Daniel, what are you doing? Don't make, don't be a bad example for them. I'm going to teach them to misbehave. No, I do not want you to make changes on my computer. It's always trying to change my computer, but I like my computer the way it is. I do. Daniel says I don't like it. But that's what we've been looking at here. This thing. Right? The red arrow is the unit tangent, the, uh, the green arrow is the Frenet normal, and that blue arrow is the binormal. The little hatched plane there is the actual osculating plane. The circle is the osculating circle that I was, I've been talking about. And you know, I have shown you what you need to find the explicit formulas for these things for a given curve, although I think we would all agree that even for a curve with relatively simple formulas like this, it's a bear. right? which makes it ideal for a first test in here because it tests exactly the skill set I want you to have assimilated by the time the test comes around, which is how to calculate the derivative of space curves, how to calculate the length of vectors, how to take dot products, how to take cross products. A single one of these problems has all of that goodness in it, right? It does. It's all there. I could have one question on the test. It would be reasonable to just give it, here's a curve, calculate the Frenet frame and the curvature and the torsion. That could be the whole test. It would be a reasonable test. But I don't, I don't want to do that because it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. So um, anyway, as I was saying, the torsion basically measures how that plane is lifting, how the curve is lifting off that plane as time goes on, whereas the curvature is describing the change of um, the unit tangent. These and things, these, these, this discussion actually has a generalization to n dimensions. And um, it's interesting. You can talk about the Frenet Serre equations for a curve in n dimensions instead of just having two, in the curvature and the torsion, they're actually the same thing. It's really the first curvature and the second curvature. If you study a curve in n dimensions, you have more than one curve. You actually have n minus one curvatures. Curvature one, curvature two, all the way up to the n minus one curvature. The n minus one curvature then describes basically if the motion is in some hyperplane. And um, 
It's all well-known mathematics. I have, I can show you a book to read on it if you want. If you don't, it's cool. Anyway, tomorrow we will wrap up the material and then hopefully you actually have time for your homework questions. Thanks guys. You can cut it off.